pas mus 15 min.lt ir žmonės LT redakcijoje. Svečiuojasi Aleksandras Rybakas 2009 m. Eurovizijos konkurso nugalėtojas. Pergalė jis išplėšė Norvegijai. Lietuvoje Aleksandras svečiuojasi tam, kad pristatytų naują animacinį filmą, tai yra kaip prisijungintis slibina antrąją šio filmo dalį. Naujausia Aleksandro daina, Incio Fantasy, yra įtraukta į garso takelį ir skamba šiame filme. Aleksandras pažadėjo šį kūrinį atlikti ir čia pas mūsų redakcijoje. Pokalbės su Aleksandru vyks anglų kalba, vertimai lietuvių kalba, netrukus išvystite portalą žmonės LT. So, first of all, Aleksandr, I want to ask you, how many times have you been here in Lithuania? Because you had some TV shows, concerts here before. Yes, I am, I will say that Lithuania is one of one of the ten most important countries for me after Eurovision and uh, everything is by chance uh, but it so happens that I have uh, my dancers are from uh, Lithuania uh, they're from Kaunas mm -hmm. and so I travel with them um, in uh, to uh, Turkey, Azerbaijan, Norway I've been with them everywhere uh, it's, they're called uh, Time to Show a very good dance group and uh, my uh, my uh, manager for the Baltics is uh, also from here, Ramunas. So um, I have a good team actually in Lithuania. So it's easy for me to come here again and again. Mm -hmm. And also for my um, my Facebook page, which had actually over seven hundred thousand last week, mm -hmm. uh, many of those thousand people are from Lithuania. So. Uh, so I always have a big audience when I have concerts here and it get, gets bigger and bigger, so thank you. And uh, you said that you have a Lithuanian team here. Uh, do you know um, how to speak Lithuanian for a bit, for example? No, but um, it's, very, it's very easy for me in Lithuania because first of all you're very good in English, uh, many of you at least, <laughs> and uh, also the second language is Russian. So, um, so I'm, I'm very happy for that. It's it's very easy for me because I can speak either Russian or Lithuanian. No, English. And everybody understands you all the time. Yeah, I, I don't always understand them, but <laughs> I think people understand me. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this time you came here to Lithuania to present a new movie, and uh, your new song into a fantasy uh, yes. is in the soundtrack. Do you often compose music for movies? Ha! <laughs> I wish. Um, no, I just I just started um, because people invite me all the time um, and they invite me as an artist uh, because I have new songs all the time and I'm, I'm very happy for that but of course it would be nice that to get the recognition of a composer because mm -hmm. that's that's what I really want to be and um, I actually I did an, another song for a movie called uh, uh, Black Lightning mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was three years ago and also I did some music for your it, um, children's movie called Johan but this is so much uh, this is so much bigger for me because this is uh, DreamWorks animation which is like the Bible to me, <laughs> the Bible of uh, family fun. <laughs> Did you get more invitations to compose music? Well, you know, uh, actually, this is this was not an invitation. I invited myself. <laughs> I wrote I wrote the song maybe three months before the premiere of uh, DreamWorks How to Train Your Dragon, two, and. And I, I really, I, I didn't think that they would, that they would uh, have time for even listening for, to the song, you know. So it was more important for me to fulfill my plan and just produce the song and send it to DreamWorks. Although I, I thought that they wouldn't listen to it, but they actually did. And they said that actually all of our contracts are done, but we'll listen to it. And then uh, two weeks went by and nothing happened and I thought that, well, of course, they have lots of things to do, they won't probably even bother. And suddenly they, they called me and they said, well, actually, they don't call, in my head they called me, but they just sent an email. And, 
um, and they said, uh, darling Alexander, well, that was all also in my head, but uh, they said, Alexander, <laughs> uh, we want to do something in, with your music. So already that was a big achievement already that they listened to the song, really. And uh, talking about movies, uh, everybody knows that you are a charismatic person. Have you ever tried acting in a movie, or for example, TV series, whatever? Well, like um, I think that I'm not one of the best actors in Norway. I don't think that. Uh, although I, I think that if I get a good character, good uh, role, then if it would fit for me, I would go do a good job. So I think I did a very good job in uh, How to Train Your Dragon, the Norwegian version. And also my my favorite role would be to play Ole Bull. He's not that famous, but he he lived 200 years ago and was a violin virtuoso, and he he was friends with uh, Mozart. Uh, I'm sorry, with Mozart, but Chopin and uh, Paganini and all of the and Hendrik Ibsen and all of the great ones. And he reminds a little bit of me, or I I'm I'm more like him. So uh, that would be very good. And I will play that role next year, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's important to stay true to your main talent. And my, my biggest talent is to play violin, not acting. Mm -hmm. But everything else is just fun, you know, pop music, jazz, everything is experiments. The, the biggest thing for me is to stay true to my roots, my my talent, and that is the violin. Mm -hmm. uh, well, talking about the pop music uh, and Eurovision Song Contest, in 2009 you won the competition, and uh, it was five years ago, yet we still present you as a winner of Eurovision. Does it bother you, or doesn't it? It, wouldn't, it would bother me if you would present me as the loser of Eurovision, <laughs> but uh, as long as I won, it's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, do you watch Eurovision Song Contest now? Yes, of course. Um, this year I was very into it. I, I liked both uh, Conchita, who won, and uh, also the Netherlands song. I, I thought that was the coolest song in Eurovision in many years. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very happy with this year. Mm -hmm. uh, when Conchita won the competition, uh, it was quite a scandal, if we could say so. And uh, people were uh, thinking, if, uh, why did Austria win, for example? Was it because of the song or was it uh, because of the lady with the beard? What's your opinion? It's because of the song. Because of the song? Yeah. And what about the beard? What's your opinion about the beard? I've, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on beards. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if, if I can say anything about it. But it, uh, I believed in in the concept and that's the most important thing I mean I would I would much rather uh, look at a man uh, dressed as a woman with beard who has something strong in his eyes her his eyes uh, I would much rather that than look at a perfect perfect blonde uh, woman with a with a Gucci bag and everything and there's nothing here you know mm -hmm. so the most important thing for me is to see that there's something behind this mm -hmm. and it it was like that with Austria mm -hmm. I think that's that's why she really convinced people as well because she believed in the song mm -hmm. oh, well, some critics say that now if you want to win the Eurovision Song Contest you have to go on stage uh, being naked or do something as stupid as you can uh, well, we'll see <laughs> next year. <laughs> uh, you've won Eurovision Song Contest once. Yeah. Uh, could you please share your recipe with Lithuanians? Because we would really <laughs> like to win that uh, competition well, for once. Well, you know that uh, usually I would say that for Eurovision, go as far away from radio as you can. Mm -hmm. Because I think that Eurovision is one of the last concepts where people don't think about the format where people can just be we don't with where artists don't have to copy the American sound you know which mm -hmm. is everywhere now uh, to get to the radio you have to be exactly like uh, like uh, Madonna or Beyonce or Justin Bieber you know 
uh, Eurovision is one of the very few stages where you can just be yourself and not try to copy and so that that I would say one year ago that then it has to be something far from radio but actually t uh, this year Netherlands was the perfect radio song and uh, they also almost won so there is no rule for Eurovision and that's what's so good about it. And what about the politics? Is it a political competition or not? No, I, I think that um, I think that countries will vote for each other like uh, Cyprus always votes for Greece and, and vice versa uh, not because they're neighbors and uh, because of the politics but because they understand each other's culture mm -hmm. so even if there's a bad song from Greece um, coming then still Cyprus and everybody said well, what is this then Cyprus oh yeah that's mm -hmm. exactly what we like and that's the same with uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, almost the same, right? Uh, almost, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, but I mean in culture. Uh, Belarus also a little. It's Slavic countries. They're the same. Uh, Norway, Denmark, Sweden always vote for each other because they believe in the high heels and the high hair. All of them. Um, so the, I don't think it's about politics. It's about culture. And if you're lucky to to get through to all of the all of the cultures like Lordi did you know uh, or like I did for instance <laughs> um, then you win okay so thank you for the interview I just want to say thank you for the support and uh, I hope that you go into YouTube and see the song into a fantasy because that that vi uh, music video was made with DreamWorks and it makes me very proud and happy so I hope people will, will see it, hope so. Thank you. Yeah.